So something interesting happens when you're tuning a dipole. We'll talk about non-insulated wire and insulated wire. So with non-insulated wire, if you've got some sort of dipole element and you fold the end back, it's effectively going to short itself out because it's uninsulated. All right, so the overall length is going to be that big. All right, because, you know, you, it's bound to touch here and there. It just is. So that's easy. But a lot of us use insulated wire. And what we want to know when we're making our dipole, vertical, or whatever else, we fold the end back. What actually happens? So I'm a practical scientist more than a theoretical scientist. And that's why I like talking about some of these concepts, concepts and in a really simple manner. So let me tell you my experience, and oh, we might get into some of the technicals, but let's talk about what happens when we fold the element of a dipole over to tune it or to put a loop on. And let's also talk about what happens when we're trying to tune it on its third harmonic and do the same thing. So I'll tell you a funny story. Years ago, and I'll just make sure you can see this, years ago I had my, my big tower, all right, and with a hydraulic mast, so this is in super size, all right? I had a uh, 160 meter dipole, so that's 40 meters that way, three fours of 12, 135, 140 feet, and then the same going this way here. And by the way, it's a lot longer than you think because now you've got to add the paracord before it got to the ground, all right, where we put our guys take in. So it becomes gigantic, all right, and that is the end of the element there. So to tune it, what I would have to do is, and we've got a tent over here, a little tent, because it was like a field day thing, 160 metres. We have a, it's called Club Calls. I go, oh, it's in the wrong place. I'd get my little calculator out. And I'd go, okay, well, that needs, let's say it needs three feet taken off, three, feet, which is about one metre. All right. So I'd come out, I'd have to release the guy go 40 metres that way to get to the end of the element. And all as I was doing at the very end of the element, which I'll do in red, the very end of the element, if the element came down, did this, I would say, oh, one metre or three feet. So I'll just, I'll just measure a metre and then I would take it back and off it would go again. All right, so this bit here became that bit there. All right, that's all I did. And it didn't make any blooming difference. All right, I had to do that several times. And by the time I'd done, bearing in mind that that was 80 meters and that was 80 meters, so we're roughly looking at 160 meters. Every went out. I did this, I must have done it 10 times. That's about a mile just before the contest. <laughs> right? Certainly 1.6 kilometers. So, what was going wrong then? Okay, so a couple of years later, what I discovered, and why you're possibly watching this, I don't know, is the following rule of thumb formula. All right, so if I've got, it doesn't matter, it could be a vertical or a dipole, they both follow the same principles when it comes to tuning like this. I'll take a vertical, because I can go up and down on here a lot easier than side to side. So we come up, and in normal circumstances, let's say we're just hanging this on a tree, all right, we make a little loop at the top, you know, why not? A little bit of tape or something, and put our paracord up to our tree. However, we do a calculation and it says, and by the way, if you want to do that calculation, we, we just go on Google and we just ask for the easy way out of this anyway, SWR calculator M0 MCX. And there's this, cal I've shown you before, so I'm not going to dwell on it. Um, there's the calculator there. You can download it, run it. If assuming you've got something that will open Microsoft Excel, Enable editing. So, and it says here, I don't know, you've got it tuned at 7.1 and you're after 7.2. And it says 13 centimeters, which is about um, uh, seven or eight inches. Okay. Easy. So what do you do? Well, let's just magnify this up. We're into 13 centimeters. Let's stay in our science format, which is whatever inches. You can convert that on Google, convert 13.6 centimeters two inches let's just do a blow up here right and it says we need to cut that well that's easy to cut it because you would just undo your tape 
measure 13 back off it, put the fold back on, and it would kind of work. But what happens if it was the other way around? What happens if it's currently on 7.35 and you actually want it on 7.25? It says, oh, we now need to add 13 centimeters. So how do we add 13 centimeters? Because if we just added, oh, different color, ignoring this one now. If we just added 13 centimeters that way, or seven inches, whatever it is, um, 13 centimeters, because it's the end of the element, it wouldn't look like it's actually got 13 centimeters. It would look, it's about a third of that. 13 divided by three is, well, if it was 12 before, so four and a bit, four and a, four and a third. It would look like, when you did the calculation again, it looked like all that you've done is added four centimeters. Oh, what's that, inch and a half, which is no good because what we've got is this three to one happening at the end of the element. So you can make a decision. You either add it on there or take your table bar, lengthen it and go ahead and, and sort it out. And that's what happens on the end of a dipole. So you can't just fold it back or add a bit on and fold a bit more over because that fold over actually counts at about three to one. Now what Tom and I, until three or four months ago, I thought it really was about three to one throughout the, throughout the length of the dipole. Now Tom and I, Tom M0 RMY, we put a linear loaded dipole up. If you remember, I'll try and find the the video and, and put it in the um, description. But basically the coax came to here and we strapped these lines together. Now, if it was for 80 meters, we would actually need each leg to be roughly, okay, to be roughly 19 meters long, just under 60 feet, right? Each side, it should be that. But I reckon mathematically with the three to one business, we could get this down to about 12.5 meters by going along and back. And this is what linear loading is, right? Well, in my book it is, 12.5. Now, we knew we were gonna be out, but we didn't know how much. And all I had to do is chop the ends off here to get the tune of where I wanted. We did the calculation, and of course, knowing the three to one formula, when it says, let's say, I don't know, let's say it was at, we wanted to shorten it, so it was resonant on 3.6, and I'm trying to get it to 3.75. Let's say it was telling me to cut, actually these numbers are about right, it was about half a metre, 77 centimetres. Well, I knew it was a three to one ratio, so I'd have to multiply seven-ish by three. Three sevens are 21, so that's about 2.1 metres, just, six, just over six feet. So we went back out to the field and chopped it, and it was too much. All right, so the conclusion I've come to, depending on whereabouts you're mucking around with your linear loading, is that at this end here, on the, on the left, that's at about three to one, and this seemed to be about five to one. What happens when we use the end of the element to tune our antenna? That's what's going on, exactly the same with a vertical, apart from one tiny issue. If you happen to be trying to tune a three quarter wave, all right? So let's say, I mean, I've got, I use three quarter waves on 12 and 10 meters. They're not quite, oh, this is for the signature 12.4. They go up and they come back down quite a lot. And the reason for that is that I was a, a compromise between three quarters of a wavelength and five eighths of a wavelength. That's 75%, and this is 62.5%. And what I was doing, I was compromising down at around, that says supposed to say 75. It's probably about 70%, because if I looked at the far field plots, I was getting a bit of a trade off, and I really liked that 70, 70%. But this is quite long, so a quarter wave is gonna be about that size. Half waves that size, you know, three quarter waves up here. And what I did is I, I made the height a bit different. Now, if I was wanting to tune that, this this fold over here, not only am I folding the fold over, uh, I'm trying to tune the fold over, I'm trying to tune it to the fact, to the tune of of three times more than it really is, in other words. So I've put my fold over on a, on a three quarter wave 
would be about nine times what you would need to tune. So if it says you need to take an inch off or add an inch, it's not. It's going to be about nine inches on a harmonic. All right. So a reason for this video is that I had a discussion with a customer on Zoom the other night. And we were just sorting some stuff out. And he said a YouTuber, he seemed to remember years ago, saying that when you fold it over, it made no impact. But it does. And I think it wouldn't make an impact if it was solid copper, you know, and, 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 and it wasn't enameled. A lot of the time I use insulated wire and that's how I tune mine. And that's how I discovered it all. As I said at the beginning of this, I am a practical scientist, not a theoretical scientist. But I'll tell you why it works, not how it works. Sometimes, okay? See you on the next one. Next video is here, by the way. And uh, thanks for tuning in today. Bye for now.